Hello everybody and welcome to the NBL One Show. I'm Cameron Luke. Liam Santa Maria is here with me after a big weekend of hoops. Hello Liam. Hi man. And now, uh, she's not even a special guest anymore. She's just part of the show really, isn't she? She's a friend of the show. Friend of the friend. show. <laughs> there you go. We're talking she's a course. superstar. Uh, very much so. In every different format, every different league right mm -hmm. now, we talk of course of Beck. Oh, hello Beck. Hey. Yeah, we, we Good sat, to be back. Great. Well, <laughs> when we sat down on Sunday morning, on might have been Monday morning, and we were talking about who we should get on, we just went to the straight to the stats and we're like, 30 plus, let's get her back. Nice little weekend. So Schweers didn't get a... Did she have 41? I did actually say Schweers, and you said, uh, let's go for Beck Girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> there you go, got you back. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm actually going to promise that Chelsea Schweers is going to be on our, on. Yep. on our show. Yeah. On our show, on our show, in the next couple of weeks. Next big Eltham win. Yeah. Schwerz is in. I yeah. guess the big, solid team. Well, the reason she's not here is because you continue to pick through their strength <sighs> of schedule, even though they keep playing to win. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. Let's sort Dan and I'll get a great win on the weekend. You had 40, and you continue to uh, push yourself up in the ladder four-game winning streak. Yeah, uh, I think that was maybe our first like real test with the stronger side in Nutter Wadding. Mm. Um, I feel like they're a lot like us. Um, a few veterans, but then a lot of good up-and-coming young kids. So, uh, Rosie, I remember she was saying, was pretty much looking at us in the mirror. So, um, mm. it was really good. We got it done. Um, we started a little bit slow, but once we got our run, it was just sort of put our foot on the metal, and, uh, yeah, it was really good. I think last time you were here, and of course we're going to talk about 3x3 because you are going to be away from the NBL mm -hmm. 1 this weekend as well. But we spoke about how hard it is to, to one, fight the balance and write the balance between the two formats, but also two to be in and out of a team every now and then. And you've had so many younger girls who have, who have been away. Yeah. How has the team found the right balance with girls being in and out of teams for different reasons? I think we've done really well. Um, I was actually talking to someone the other day. Uh, for, for me personally, going from 3x3 to 5x5, five five, I feel like I have found the balance now. Um, just changing my mindset, the feel of the ball, because that's especially a mm. different thing. Sometimes you go in, you're like, oh, yeah, that's definitely not the same ball. But um, within the team, I think I'm quite lucky with the girls. We just have such an amazing group, and um, Whitey knows how to handle us really, really well. So um, I go out. The people who need to step up have every single time. And then, you know, when I come back in, people go back to, you know, their main roles and what they're really good at. And um, I think we just have a really good flow and gel of the group. When you were last here, I asked you if um, Kelly Wilson from Bendigo was the uh, early season MVP and you kind of <coughs> had to little cop a little bit and had to say the right thing and that, yeah, maybe it would be her. And since then, you've been averaging like 300 points a game. <laughs> 37 points in 24 minutes last week in Launceston. Came out and had 40 in that, like you say, your kind of biggest test of the season. Um, I won't get you to talk about MVP stuff, but what is the part of your game right now that you feel is just working the best for you? Yeah, I am um, was looking at stats that I think someone just put up. I think my shooting percentage has gone up from the outside, so people are having to start, you know, to respect me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I'm shooting well, I'm going to keep shooting it. I just I feel like when you go from WNBL to NBL1, you do have a bit more uh, time and space. So it's almost a bit easy to set up your shot. But, you know, once I start hitting them, then I just feel like my mid-range game and getting to the rack, that's my, you know, that's my key to my game. Mm -hmm. And I just feel so strong and powerful mm -hmm. at the moment. And mm -hmm. Bruce Gray, you know, mm -hmm. helps me in the gym. And I just think... 3x3 is transferring that into 5-on-5. Mm. Five five. Like one ref said the other day, I got the ball and I made that move. She's like, ah, yep. She's gone straight to the rack. She ain't going anywhere yeah. else. So. And you, you look like you're embracing the contact too. You talk about 3x3, you work in the gym. You look like you're, you're getting and one after and one after and one. Establishing some contact, still able to finish. You, you look really strong out there. Yeah, I think it's it's good when you get to a point, you go up and you get hit and you make it. I'm angry if I don't make it now. Mm -hmm. I, I want that and one. So um, I'm just having so much fun. Like, honestly, that's, that's my main thing. I'm having so much fun. My team is great. Um, and I love being on the floor every single minute and I can't, can't ask for much else. Well, just on that, so you had 37 points in 24 minutes and I legitimately believe that athletes are too unselfish nowadays. They need to play more minutes. If you've got an opportunity to do something that doesn't happen often, you could have had 60 that game. You need to play more minutes if you're having a big game like that, I think. Well, I think what's really good about Liam my disagrees, group... Liam disagrees, but I'm going to push my case. <laughs> you, we were, we were um, up by a fair bit yeah. and, you know, I'm not going to be there for every game mm -hmm. and... Um, 
I, Whitey was like, what do you want to do? You know, he spoke to me and I go, nah, I, the, let the younger girls have a yeah. go. It's, um, if it was a close game. As I yeah, said, if too it was a, If it was a close game, <laughs> you know, of course, like, I want to be on that floor, help win that game. But we were up by so much and the young girls who, they're at training doing just as much of the work as anyone else. So let them have a go. And they were able to play a quarter and a half and... We were getting pumped on the on the bench, the vets. So um, yeah, no, it was a really good game for them. At some point this season, mm -hmm. Beck's going to have the highest scoring game in the women's this season. Well, it's going to have to be more than fitty. Mm -hmm. mm, there you go, Maybe. pressure's on. <laughs> hey, this weekend you're not going to be here because you're playing three x three heading such a away. Big weekend. But it is a huge weekend Ooh. for the team because Geelong, Bendigo, and Dandenong are right now are probably the three standouts and. You play the other two teams that yeah. we talk about a lot. Honestly, such a massive weekend. <laughs> it's going to be huge. I'm really excited to, uh, you know, watch live stats and the mm -hmm. live stream when I'm away. Um, yeah, it's a big weekend. I honestly think it is anyone's game. I know my team, uh, we're definitely up for the challenge and uh, Geelong and Bendigo are both two different teams who play two different totally style of gameplay. So um, I think it will be really interesting to see what happens. But uh, range of danger, as I always like to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just, just on that. So we, I think last time we were here, Bendigo well, definitely would have been undefeated. And you were looking forward and you spoke about the challenge of playing Bendigo yeah. and, and how stacked they are. Do you, do you like the f well, that Geelong beat them a couple of weeks ago? Would you rather have been undefeated when you ran into them at full strength or going into the playoffs, or does it not matter that they've got a loss? No, I don't think it really matters that they've matter. got a loss. I think yep. the fact that they have one, you know, OK, they are beatable, you know. Um, that's probably another positive. You know, sometimes it's a mental thing for some people or some teams. Um, I just think we're a bit athletic like Geelong is. Uh, not exactly the same. But they're going to be a tough team. They yeah. have some vets in there. And like I said, watching, you know, Gabe and Kelly play, is it's delightful to watch. Mm. And they have Lavy that she can shoot. They have Becca Tobin, played such a good WNBL. Like, you just, you name the list, Nadine Payne. Gets it's going. endless. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Yeah, Becca, it, yeah. Oh, right. it's, it's going to be an epic couple of games, that's mm -hmm. for sure. We know what, just quickly just parked NBL 1 for one second because you are away 3x3 into the Asia Cup. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the 3x3 is getting bigger and better. You seem to be away you know, almost every couple of weeks, either in Australia or, or internationally. How's yeah. it all going and how much are you enjoying it? As we head, we, are, we under 100, are we under a year yet to Tokyo? We wouldn't be far off being 12 months out from the Olympics as well, which yeah. th that competition is going to be a big part of. How are you enjoying it? Oh, absolutely loving it. Um, more of it is happening, it feels like, mm -hmm. you said, uh, this season. And um, it's, it's getting more real that... Oh, this is now a real thing. We have a World Cup we just made. We have mm. Asia Cup where need redemption, need the gold because we got bronze last yep. year. Killed myself. Mm -hmm. So we're going back and we're getting there. And we're not coming back unless it's gold. So that'll happen. <laughs> um, and then just the fact it's, uh, you know, we could potentially qualify for an Olympics is amazing. And it's been a dream of mine and a dream of, you know, any athlete of that, you know, age of 15 or whatever. So... Um, the group of girls is really, really good. We get along so well. Even even with the guys, Puerto Rico was one of the best, uh, you know, international experiences I've ever had. And um, I can't wait just to see the game grow. People are getting, you know, way more excited about this. And yeah. they watch it. They're getting more involved. So it's um, I'm quite passionate about it. I love it. And, um, yeah, it'll be an interesting few months for us, that's for sure. Just on that, I might take that opportunity, of course, Jeremy Kendall, who we know particularly well from the NBL, the Siebel yeah. days, which is the old NBL one and the amalgamation of the leagues. And, of course, such a huge part of 3x3 in the competition here in Australia and internationally as well, hurting his ACL or doing his ACL a couple of weeks ago. So shout out to, to Jeremy, who we speak a lot about on NBL yep. over time as well and spoke about the, the needs and the way he could have played and probably will, again, playing the NBL, mate. So uh, rest up, get yourself mm. back big and stronger. Looking forward to you being back on the NBL court, the NBL one court maybe one day soon, and the 3x3 court as well. Yeah, it's a shame. All signs were pointing towards him getting an NBL roster yep. spot from the start of from this start. season, something he hadn't had before. So the timing was not good, and he was playing so, so well throughout all that 3x3 stuff. So it's a bit of a bummer, but I love his attitude. Mm -hmm. his, the surgery's happened now, it's been successful, but going into it, he's saying, look, I appreciate all the love and support and rest assured I'm going to be back better than ever I'm going to put. I'm going to go back into the lab, put in all the hard work 
and I'll be good. And he's such a hard worker, he will be. Mm. Might just touch on Kayla George. It's been a fair bit of change at the Dallas WNBA team for an Australian point of mm. view in the last couple of days. Liz Cambage being traded out. And Kayla George, who played at Hobart in the early days of the NBL one season. Now, she has been uh, released. Do we expect her back, Liam? I'm looking towards you. What do you think? Um, I think that uh, it's possible, mm -hmm. yeah. That certainly Hobart have um, reached out to her agent and um, are in talks to try and bring her back. M I'm, I'm told that uh, as per the rules, I don't know exactly how this rule works, but the rule is that if she comes back into the NBL 1 this season, it can only be with Hobart. Okay. Mm. So um, that would be... That would be massive for them if they can bring her in. It's huge for Hobart, it's huge for the league, of course. We talk about all the high-profile players playing mm. and, you know, obviously... They've have you played, have you played Hobart? Uh, we played Hobart and we won, but without Kayla without George. Kayla, yeah. they're, they're a good, um, tough team and you do. You had Kayla in there. Uh, they're very tall. She can shoot, she can do a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So they'll be unstoppable if she comes back and um, I really feel for her. I think she definitely should have made that you know, Dallas roster, mm -hmm. but if she comes back, it'll, you know, be great for the NBL One League to have a talent like her. Their import, Green, who came in once Kayla went out, she's been putting up big numbers, she but has. they've been losing games. They were four and one, they've lost four in a row, so they're four and five, they've slipped to 11th. So, boy, if they can bring Kayla in, watch Huge. a rocket up yeah. the standings. All right, let's talk about the men's as well, because I'm assuming Liam Santa Maria last week has selected <laughs> Ballarat to win, because did you hear what uh, David Herbert did at Geelong? Liam's a reason Bendigo lost, because he said they wouldn't lose a game, and David Herbert put yeah, it up yeah. on the whiteboard in the pre-match, and Geelong went out and had about a 35-point <laughs> first quarter, and the game was done. Good. So What did I say I'm not. There? Well, I'm assuming that Ballarat. you said oh. they wouldn't lose ever again, and Brendan excellence. Joyce went down. No, what I have been doing is singing the praises of the Centre of Excellence kids. Tell you well, mm. they are very they are well. Really was in good. on the weekend mm -hmm. as well. They're, they're, they are 32. so fun to watch. Josh Giddy is a star of the future. Mm. Lucas is having a great season. Um, yeah, and remember I, we said if when they are coming into your building, go down and watch is they are super, there's some serious stars of the future. Wigness, certainly one of them. Mm -hmm. They are very fun to watch. And it'll be interesting too, because they had an opportunity here, Ballarat, late. And I think Sam Shaw missed a three right on the buzzer. So it was, it was a great game. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, it went to overtime, I think, yeah, actually. First, yeah, yeah, it went yeah, to three overtime. Three points so in overtime. They, this is a young talent team. You, you spoke a little bit earlier about teams, you know, warming up and getting better as later in the year. This is these kids in and out, some inconsistencies as they're playing a bit of semi-professional basketball, but they're a team that you get to the second half of the year, they're going to be they're going to be very hard to play against and if they get on that form and that role, who knows what could happen from there. And as youngsters as well in the COE, you are like the underdogs, you have nothing to lose. So mm. they you just go out every game firing and you can tell that they are and they're having some really good games and they're shocking some uh, teams as well. Which makes um, Nana Wadding's win over them on the Sunday yeah. even that little bit more impressive because that's mm. not a team you want to play as a veteran team on the back end of a doubleheader. <laughs> <laughs> what, like 14, 15 hours after your, your Saturday night game yep. against Dandenong, yep. which is tough against those, you know, Lucas Barker and Sam Froling and those guys. They backed up, up and just took care of business. 33 and 16 for Simon Connor, who just stood up and had a big one as well. Mm -hmm. Now, are we underrating Waverley? We, we spoke a lot about the, you know, the Siebel teams compared to the Big V teams and how it all mixes and matches over the course of an NBL 1 season. But Waverley, uh, we'll see a buzzer beater in a moment, they're up to fourth in the NBL 1 men's uh, ladder as well. Are we underrating them? Because I don't... I, yeah. and I, all apologies to Waverley as we watch this down the stretch. Yeah, I don't Dylan think we've met... Hold on, let's just focus on that. Look at that. One foot. Lefty. Runner. Left foot. To his 29th point of the game. Eight rebounds, six assists. Stuck the game winner in Bendigo. Mm -hmm. um, for a guy that's come up from the lower leagues, it was a big moment. So, yeah, apologies to Waverley. I'm legit when I say this. I don't think we've mentioned the Waverley men's team no, yet. No, no, on the no. NBA we showed them out last week. I said, Did keep we? an eye on Waverley. They're playing really well. They were... What? Oh, that's when Five you said. Three that, oh, that's when you said they'll beat Bendigo on the buzzer. I forgot about that. <laughs> are we underrating them? Well, how are we rating them? Are we I don't underrating know. I... them? All right. We're not overrating them. No, we're I not. I think we're properly rating them. We're properly rating them. Which is them? that they are one of the better teams mm -hmm. in that next tier below yes. the top three teams. Okay. Now of Ballarat, Noah right. Wadding, and Kilsyth. Well, on that, which is pretty impressive uh, for them. They're, they're...
Well, well that, sounds, that sounds... Arkilsoth men, still a top three team or one of those powerhouse teams because they've had an yeah. interesting couple of weeks. They lost to Southern. They lost their first game to the Southern Sabres. Dave Barlow had a big one, but they hadn't been playing all that well. And mm -hmm. then they lost to Ballarat, which was a close game early in the fourth, and then Ballarat were undefeated at the time, was able to blow it out. But they went down to Diamond Valley last week. Yep. Um, now, Diamond Valley haven't been setting the world on fire and actually had a lead Kilsoth for the majority of the game, but Diamond Valley played better down down the stretch and got the W. Where, where do we see Kilsoth right now, considering how stacked they are? Oh, they're just in a bit of a slump. Just a bit of a slump? Yeah, they'll be OK. Yeah. Big game from Logan Hovey, mm -hmm. the uh, import for Diamond Valley. 27 points and 8 rebounds. they got Ben Allen, Liam Thomas. Um, nice little squad, so it's nice to see them put a win together because they've uh, been struggling a bit. They were 2-7 and seven before... Um, Oh, no, they weren't 2-7. and seven. They were 2-6. and six. Mm -hmm. They backed up with a loss to... A close loss to Geelong. Hope you played well in that one as well. So it's a good win for Diamond Valley. The, Kilsoth, the, Kilsoth are going to get everyone's See. best shot. Yeah. Because they're stacked with NBL-level talent. True. And sometimes, like Southern coming in, like Kilsoth, uh, like Diamond Valley here... That's huge. ...that team's going to get the win. Yeah, that four-point lead late at home against a team you expected to beat. That'd be disappointing for Shuler and the co at Kilsoth. But still no, no worries for Kilsoth for you, Liam? Um, no, no worries. Okay. They're still within that group. But, at mm -hmm. the, but a few weeks ago, before mm -hmm. that loss to Southern, they were firing on all cylinders and it looked like they were a class above and... Perhaps that's not the case. NBL one game of the week this weekend will be Diamond Valley and Knox. And I'll be at the State Basketball Centre as well watching the men's and women's games there. So looking forward to, to seeing Diamond Valley in the flesh. Uh, someone who won't see for a couple of weeks, injury up Albury Way with Bosley out for a couple of weeks. Brad Chalmers, the uh, coach, announced it yesterday. It's disappointing for a team that uh, had, had, we're good early, a little bit of a rough patch, but hopefully can get going again. Yeah. I'm not sure. We called them potentially that they were pretenders. No, no, you yeah. called them pretenders. Well, <laughs> I think they are. You called out their strength of schedule early. Yeah. Oh, well, they were we rolling go. early. What were they, 3-0, 4-0, something like that? 3-0 without one of their imports, I yeah, think. Yeah, well, they've lost five of their last six, and now they don't have Bosley for the next mm -hmm. three weeks. And they're sitting 13th. They're 4-5, and five, mm -hmm. and that could start sliding. They play Kilsyth oh, that'll be tough. this week. So Where's the game? In Albury Wodonga, okay. which is where they lost by 60 to Ballarat. That's right. That's, yeah, but as I said at the time, it was I feel a, very negative it, today. Uh, it, one, you're just telling me that it is, and two, it, yep. it, it was a closer 60 than people No, it wasn't. Thought. It wasn't. <laughs> no, you're right. I stuck up for him at the time, and they've let me down uh, since then, but that's going to be no good as well. So, uh, to Bosley, hopefully get back on the court rather uh, quickly. Okay, games to watch this weekend. Can we shout out a few people and some oh. performances? Oh, OK, Another yeah. triple-double from Kelly Wilson. Yeah, I mean, that's just a norm. I'm yeah. immune to that now. 18-11-11 in a big win. Lauren Scherf, 32 points and 20 rebounds, 6 assists in a win over Frankston, where Steph Reed had 30. Lauren Scherf is... I flagged her last week as a potential MVP candidate or someone should, that should be in that conversation. She wasn't on our graphics. She should have been. Do mm. um, you feel like she's just going to get better and better and that team might do the same? For sure. I definitely think um, that team is a, is a building team. They have a lot of good players in that starting five group. Um, a lot of them are my friends as well, so I know what they can do and mm -hmm. they're all, like, good people as well. And Chef, um, yeah, Chef's been working on her game and uh, I think this is her season to really shine. She's proving it. She's getting points on the board. Like, she's a big body and can shoot a trail three. That's, that's hard to defend in this mm. league. And um, I think she's uh, proving to everyone uh, what she can really do and I'm really happy for her. Tad Dufelmeyer, oh, Jr. It, wouldn't it be great... <laughs> I think we're obviously old, Liam, so we remember his dad. But uh, yes. wouldn't it be great to see him bob up and playing really well, but bob up on an NBL roster well, sometime soon? For Hobart, 26 points, mm -hmm. 10 assists and 7 rebounds. Three boards off a triple-double um, in that win over Aubrey Wodonga that they got. Um, Aubrey Wodonga went 0-2 over in, in Tassie. So that was awesome. His sister's playing really well for Bendigo and did some good work in the, in the 3x3. She really that was did, huge. yeah. Um, our just, guy Josh Sykes. Just on that, before we get to Sykes, just yeah. on that, I, I have a lot of respect for Tad Dool for my senior for how great of yeah. a basketball he was. It's gone to a new level because I was unaware till the NBL one season started that he'd named his son after him. I, <laughs> I like love that, that type you of like stuff. That? I love You're it. You're gonna so, do that? Yeah. Well, I don't know, I don't know. probably not. <laughs> 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 Maybe we'll see. Uh, all right, let's move yeah, on. Yeah, Josh Sykes, that, <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs>
That a combination. <laughs> that awesome That's combination. Yeah, Doyle, Sykes. Doyle, Doyle and Sykes. Yeah. 25 and 8 for Doyle, 27 and 12 for Eltham in a win yes. over the Southern Sabres. Just, I'm, I, I'm very surprised that Adam Doyle hasn't been picked up on NBL team. I thought his best year was last year in Adelaide, mm. and we've seen obviously the changes are there, but I watched him. I watched Does Eltham Melbourne United have an imp backup? Uh, backup point guard right now? No, I think they're still in maybe slight conversation with Peter Hooley, who's mm -hmm. having a really good NBL mm -hmm. one season himself, but there's no backup. Is Doyle point going guard to, yet? is he doing those uh, Wednesday workouts scrimmages? I don't know, I haven't been there yet. Yeah, it might be there, I would like okay. to see that matchup going on on a Wednesday down there. When's Wednesday? Tomorrow? I might pop in. Yeah, well, <laughs> if he's not Can there, anyone just roll up and have a throw? If he's not, yeah, he should get there. Can I also okay. shout out the Ballarat women again two weeks in a row? There you go. Two wins in a row. Mm -hmm. And they're, uh, they got the win over the COE, the girls yes. that are, uh, are winless from Canberra. And those two imports, Hackman and Jenkins, really are getting it done for the rush. OK, how will your girls go this week uh, without you? Oh, I think they'll do just great. Yeah. Uh, they've pumped. They've known this weekend has been coming up. And mm -hmm. I think we're actually excited about the challenge, which is always good when you play the bigger games. Um, it'll definitely be a four-quarter grind. It's not going to be a game that you'll, you know, win in a first half. So we definitely got to make sure we play some defence because mm -hmm. sometimes we tend to... You know, just do defence here and there. So uh, we've got to knuckle down. I'm sure Whiting and the girls will go through the scout really well this week. And um, I, I definitely think if we split the weekend, that's a win for sure. We obviously want to get the two, but that's two tough teams. Big, right. big game coming up from Amy Clydesdale. For sure. She's going to have a 30. Yeah, she was a bit sick this week. She uh, wasn't really at training, so she did well to get through um, the game on the weekend. So Have we got the clip of the Colleen Planeta pass fake? Please. <laughs> have please. We got the highlights? Do we have it? Do we have the highlights from... Uh, the... Did you oh, see no. this? I did see it. I Good seen it on Lord. the NBL One socials as well. So I know if we've got the footage not, cut it, somewhere. Play of the week. That was... I don't know if we do. It has to do be... We, uh, do we have it, Kane? Do you have any idea? <laughs> it has to be no, number one <laughs> it is, on it the is, highlight reel. It is, it is I don't really care nice. about a dunk. It that is, is number one. Added. Well, there weren't many dunks. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> How many dunks were there on the weekend? No, man? the men and women oh, are it's combined. It's combined. Well, yes. Well, at so NBL one. one. About 12 dunks. At, no, NBL, at NBL one. <laughs> at NBL one on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. That's the best place to see it because it's definitely yeah, bombed up. I think it is. And I think it is number one. It should be. It has yeah, to be. I think it is. Um, a couple of quick games to flag. Diamond Valley versus the COE in the women. Mm -hmm. Friday night. The only game in the women's happening on the Friday night. Or in, I guess the men are doing the same thing. Yep. 17th versus 18th. COE winless. Diamond Valley on an eight-game losing streak. So um, just as it, sometimes it Ooh. is exciting with the team battling it out at the top. I think Diamond, Diamond Valley, Valley at home. That, and they desperately... Desperately need it. And then also, we talked about Danny Nong's couple of games against Geelong and um, Bendigo. On Saturday night, Nunna Wadding versus Bendigo is a big, big game as well. So Nunna Wadding sitting fifth now. They were fourth coming into the weekend against you guys. And, um, geez, that could give Bendigo a bit of a scare on their home court. Mm -hmm. Good luck in China. Thank you very much. Yeah. Enjoy it. How long are you away for? Are you back for the following NBL one weekend or not? Um, yeah, I think so. You think so? I think so. <laughs> as long as your passport I'm gets stamped to be back, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, I'm there, I'm there. <laughs> <No>. OK. <laughs> we might see Beck gold. gold a couple of weekends. Yeah, I'll bring back yeah. the gold with my team. That's what we want Good to stuff. see. At NBL1 on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Game of the week this weekend will be Diamond Valley and Knox, but all games are broadcast. Don't miss it on YouTube. Until next week, see you, Liam. Catch you, mate. See you, Beck. See you guys, oh, that was always a pleasure. <laughs> I actually thought I said see you when you were in the thing. My apologies, man. <laughs> I thought I said see you.